morning, everyone. Welcome back to Haywire Homestead. Um, today, I just want to talk to you guys about how I built a creep feeder inside our run-in shed with just items that we had on hand. Um, creep feeders, if you've ever looked, even just for the gate from Premier One are, are almost $200. Um, to buy an actual creep feeder made for goats, they also make them for calves, uh, they're very, very, very expensive. Even secondhand, they're quite expensive. So you have to get a little creative. Now, creep feeders are designed for your goat, kids, sheep, um, whatever that you're planning on using for whether they're a market animal, um, for them to get to the grain in an area where mamas can't get to it. So they're not competing with the adult goats. Um, that's the design. Now, since we do sell ours, especially for market, um, for market, um, our goats go to market. Uh, they actually usually get sold more sold to 4-H kids who are having market fair projects. Um, you know, we need to let them have some access to grain. I don't grain super heavy, but I do want them to have access to it where they don't have to compete with the parents. All right, so you see everybody milling around. We have one raised feeder up here for the moms. And then we've got a few rubber pans. The babies will eat out over these with their moms. See, like this one little fella, he's over here munching in this bowl. But we need to have access for something else. So basically what I did was I took a paddle, pallet. Well, now this pallet's a pretty heavy duty one. I didn't get a flimsy one. This one's real heavy. Um, I lagged it into the wall over here off of that four by four. This is a four foot gate we already had on hand. Uh, it was an extra that we were saving if we needed a project. We wound up mounting it upside down because the bars down here are smaller and the babies were having a hard time figuring out how to get through there. Mom still can't get through it, but the babies can go in and out. The other thing that we did um, was I took a one by six and I just put it in between the pallet here and the wall to create a brace. And the reason why is because if the moms, goats like to rub on things, they push on things. So there was no anchor over here on this side because we have a mat underneath all this hay. Um, so I wanted a way to brace it, which also kind of helps keep the moms from getting their heads through there um, so much to get closer to the feeders. So pretty much I wanted a way to be able to get into it too, which is why we have the gate. The gate does open. And um, these are, grain elevator buckets. You can get them for a couple dollars. Sometimes people will have them. Um, you can get them for free. I had a few of them that somebody gave me. Uh, they're great for feeding your goats outside because you can hang them on a fence so they're up off the ground, but they have little holes in them. So that way the water drains out when it rains. Um, a little bit of the feed will fall through uh, the bottom, but I've not noticed that we have a big issue with waste with this. So we just mounted those low on the wall so the babies can reach them and they can come and go and get a little bit of feed whenever they want to. Uh, if you're curious about what we feed, we feed a non-GMO, non-medicated pellet feed. And then um, for the babies and nursing mothers, we add a show feed called High Noon Shine Em Up. Uh, and we just add that. That accounts for about 20% of the, the feed ration whenever we feed it. And that is for... Uh, it's just a little bit higher, a little bit of high protein, good fat and amino acids for muscle building. So the babies and the nursing mothers get that and the buck gets that. But if um, my pregnant mamas and once they're, the babies are weaned off, the moms will not get that. Must be, must be lunchtime. Uh, <laughs> All right, I don't wanna keep you guys on here for too long. It is a chilly day out here. It is dreary and the temps are supposed to be dropping. Um, we got a round bale out here. The babies can now come and go uh, in and out all day. We do close the door at night. Uh, <laughs> but here soon, they're going to be getting so big that we won't be doing that anymore. Uh, everyone seems to be gaining weight well and doing really awesome. Uh, the oldest two, which are one of them is right there in front of you, is just now three weeks old today. This little girl's two and a half weeks. Hi, sweetheart. Hi, baby. Oh, I'm sorry. This is the boy. This is the boy, and that's the girl. They're two and a half weeks old. This is their mom. So right now, we have ten babies on the ground, five boys and five girls, and we have two more does left to kid. I was kind of hoping that everybody would kind of, uh, you know, 
give birth real close together to get kidding season done and over with, but we're kind of stringing along with these last two. This is a set of triplets that were born. They're two and a half weeks old. We're going to get weights on them. Uh, we have left them with mom because this is mom's second year raising triplets. Uh, last year, she needed a little bit of help, but we're just going to monitor these guys closely. So I'm weighing, weighing them every about four days just to be sure that mom's keeping up with their needs. If not, we will pull one, whoever's the smallest, which right now everybody's pretty this much the same size. We'll pull whoever's the smallest so that way the um, mama doesn't have as much stress on her and the babies are getting what they need. And uh, this is their mama right here. All right, that's all for today. Thank you guys so much. Please make sure you hit that like and subscribe button and take care.